So now that we've defined what an arc length function is, let's talk about how we can reparameterize that function with respect to arc length. So let's say, for the sake of argument, that you have a space curve going through space, like so. You're given a starting point. We refer to that as your initial position. We'll call that s equals zero. Now along this curve, every time you move exactly one unit, you'll be arriving at a different point that's on the curve. Now imagine we could take a function and alter this vector function so that you could input whatever s value you want and the output is going to be the corresponding point where you are in space. So input <coughs> distance or arc length traveled. Oh, this stupid word. I never know how many L's are supposed to go into it, so I'm going to put three, just in case. So distance traveled, and the output is, uh, output is your point in space. We refer to this as a vector function that has been re-parameterized with respect to arc length, and we're going to talk about why we want to do that after this video. So the idea is we are going to find the arc length function which is usually s as some function of t. You saw that in the last video when we were doing the uh, arc length function for the sine of t, cosine of t, natural log of secant of t. So here's the idea. We are going to solve this for t assuming that it is a one-to-one uh, -one relation. So now we have t as a function of s. So once you have t as a function of s, you're going to make that substitution back into what the original vector function is. So plug this into the original vector function. So r of t is going to become r of t of s. So final answer is going to be in terms of the distance traveled, that s variable that we had just a moment ago. Now to demonstrate what this is going to look like, I would like to consider the following space curve. You might want to start a new page in your notes. This one's going to be a long one. <clears throat> what we're going to do is reparameterize r of t equals the following function, e to the t cosine of t, e to the t sine of t, e to the t, with respect to arc length, starting at t equals zero. That seems like a nice starting point. So first thing we'll need to do is set up our arc length function. Arc length function is supposed to be s of t is equal to the definite integral from a to b of the magnitude of r prime of, we'll go with u for our parameter once again. Oh, excuse me, this is supposed to be a t up here, not a b. I knew that didn't feel quite right. Now our starting point is going to be t equals zero, so once we're actually setting up the integral, we'll make it a point to replace that a with a zero. In the meantime, though, we have some stuff to do. So first, let's find r prime of t. No, excuse me, r prime of u. Man, it's like when you first switch from f of x to f of y, your entire world gets flipped upside down. So what we'll do is we'll differentiate all three of these component functions. First two will require the product rule. So first times derivative of the second, plus second times derivative of the first. So derivative of cosine of t was negative sine of t, which is how that negative sine got there. And then second times derivative of the first, derivative of e to the t is just e to the t. We'll do the same thing for the next one. First times derivative of the second plus second times derivative of the first. And finally, derivative of e to the t is... No, the derivative of the... It's a, it's a little joke I like to tell. Nobody likes to hear it, but, you know, that's fine. 
So next up, let's find the magnitude of this by squaring all three of these components and throwing it under a radical. Actually, you know what? Let's do the square first so that we don't have to keep drawing the radical over and over, and then we'll just take the square root once we're done. So square the first component, square the second component, Square the third component. Oh boy, hold on to your hats. This is going to be a good one. So, the first two guys here both need to be foiled, and I'm going to shortcut through uh, what you get when you foil these together. Just as a reminder, if you multiply e to the t times e to the t, you're adding the exponents. So, we're going to see a couple of e to the 2t's show up in here. So, we'll see e to the 2t sine squared of t. Uh, minus 2e to the 2t sine t cosine t plus e to the 2t cosine squared of t. That's all of that first one. Ah, crap. Every single one of these t's is supposed to be a u. Guys, I'm just going to switch it back to u at the end. Square this next one. We'll get e to the 2t cosine squared t plus 2e to the 2t cosine t sine t starting a new line plus e to the 2t sine squared t plus and then we square this e to the t so e to the 2t Whew. and it's a doozy now the good news is a whole bunch of stuff here is going to cancel out specifically this term cancels with this term and any time we see an e to the 2t with a sine squared of t, and then one with a cosine squared of t, those can be combined together. In fact, if we were to just factor out our e to the 2t, which really should be e to the 2u, we're going to have 2 sine squared t plus 2 cosine squared t plus 1. So the 2 sine squared t comes from these two terms. The 2 cosine squared t comes from these two terms, and the 1 comes from this one term. So put it all together, and we have a total of 3 e to the 2t. Now, do bear in mind this is still the magnitude squared, and because I forgot to write these as u's and I've been writing them as t's, I am about to fix that. So, fresh piece of paper, and we will keep going. So this means that the magnitude of r prime of u, and here's where I'm going to switch all my t's back to u's, is going to be the square root of what we just got, which was 3 e to the 2u. Now the good news is e to the 2u has a really nice square root, and that would be e to the u. 3 does not have a nice square root, so we're going to leave it as the square root of 3. So put this back into the context of what we're doing. Our arc length function is going to be the definite integral from the given starting point, which was t equals 0, up to t of this function. So square root of 3 e to the u du. What we're going to do is actually perform this integral and then plug in t. Then once we have that we're going to try solving for t. So root 3 that is a constant multiple so we ignore it. Integral of e to the u is simply e to the u. This will be going from 0 to t. This is going to give us e to the t minus e to the 0, like so. <clears throat> so here is the relationship that we currently have. s is equal to square root of 3 times the quantity e to the t minus 1. The idea is we are going to solve this for t. Now there are a number of ways that I could be solving this for t. I'm going to go with the simplest possible route by saying let's divide by the square root of 3, then add 1, then take a natural log. So s divided by the square root of 3 is equal to e to the t minus 1. So e to the t is going to be equal to s over the square root of 3 plus 1, not in the same fraction. Therefore, t is going to be equal to the natural log of s over the square root of 3 plus 1. What I'm going to do is take this and plug this back into the original vector function, r of t. So r of t, if you'll recall from the previous page, was e to the t, cosine of t, e to the t, sine of t, and e to the t. 
So to reparameterize this with respect to arc length is to say, let's go ahead and plug in this for t. Now, one thing that'll make this process a little bit easier is that we also know what e to the t looks like. So anywhere there's an e to the t, I can replace it with this expression instead of replacing t with this expression. So we have e to the t, which is s over the square root of 3 plus 1 times the cosine of t. And that'll be the natural log of s over the square root of 3 plus 1, comma. Next one will be e to the t sine of t, so e to the t, s over the square root of 3, plus 1, times the sine of t, natural log of s over the square root of 3, plus 1, comma, e to the t, s over the square root of 3, plus 1. So once again, to interpret what this actually means, I say I'm starting at t equals 0 on the given space curve. I want to travel s units along that curve. This function right here tells me exactly the point in space where I'm going to wind up after I travel s units. So for example, if I wanted to travel one unit, I could plug in s equals 1, and this would tell me exactly where I would be in space. If I wanted to travel uh, e units for some reason, uh, I'd plug in s equals e, and this would let me know exactly where I am after having traveled e units. Now, in our next video, we'll explain why we would ever possibly want to do this thing, and then in a different video, we'll talk about how we never, ever, ever want to do this ever again. So that'll be fun.